Hey guys, how you doing? It's, uh, I think it's Wednesday today, and I just went and uh, picked up some wood today, and I, I think I had the best haul I've had probably since last haul, but uh, the best haul I've had in a while. So this is what we got today, and this is about, like this stuff over here, is about as big a log as you wanna be cutting with the uh, 535i. And I will admit, if you put too much pressure on the saw, it does, I had it, again, I use it on echo mode or ego mode or ego mode. But when I've got it in ego mode, you know, if you push too hard, it'll, it'll freeze in the cut, which I think a gas saw will do too. But the gas saws are so loud with the engine, maybe it's not as noticeable. But, you know, there were a few times where you know, you kind of learn not to push as hard when you're using, when you're using those battery saws. But I mean, everything you're looking at in this truck is, is ready to burn. I mean, it's basically, you know, split it, stack it, keep it dry, put it in the stove, the room with the stove for a day or two, and it's gonna burn really nice. So I've got mostly, mostly ash here. Look at that nice tight grain. The bark has already fallen off. That's always a good sign if you're looking for dry wood. And then, so most of the load is ash, but then I just want to give you guys a moment. Does anybody want to take a shot at what this is here? Uh, normally this gray bark is almost glued to the tree. It's a very thin gray bark. Um, and the foliage on these trees is fairly dense as well, but it's, it's a hardwood um, I'm not sure about the charcoaling properties, but I know it gives off a lot of heat. So this is, um, this is a beach. I know it's Vegas, but there's a European and an American beach. I'd like to say this is an American beach, but I, I don't know enough to be able to tell uh, from the bark. And I'd have to look at a, a key to, to know it from the, uh, from the leaves and the growth as well. But, but we got some nice beach that was most likely standing deadwood. You can see where it's, you know, it's still fine here, but it's starting to rot. So this stuff, again, just cut it, split it, keep it dry, and it's, it's gonna be good to go. So just a couple notes um, about today. Uh, as usual, guys, put your saws away, you know, ready to go. Don't, don't put any gas in them, don't put any oil in them. Do that before you go cut because if, if they leak, you don't want them to leak oil or gas. I've got my battery in the house, grabbed the battery, threw it in the saw, and I'm still down. I've got one bar left after cutting all this, and the saw was sharp. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine this saw being any sharper. I really love this hookeroon. Like when this stuff was on a pile, you can just grab it like that. All right, maybe not that one, but you can just grab it and, and it'll kind of help you to pull stuff out of the pile. Um, so you can put the hook around and keep your body away if, if there's a chance of something falling. And the hook around will actually do a better job of grabbing the log than if I tried to take my hands and pull it. Uh, this hook around will give you an advantage. Now, the one thing I want to say about using this hook around is you need to, when you're using it, number one, never twist. Never twist and pull, because that's a surefire way to damage your back. Um, but number two is always keep your legs, um, so if I'm pulling here, keep your feet, so one foot's in front, one foot's in back. So if the hook ruin ever lets go, you've got that back leg way back there, so your whole body uh, doesn't go flying backwards. You don't want to grab the log so hard and be leaning back and then have the thing come out and, and you end up falling backwards, which I did, you know, when I first got this years ago. I did that and I flew backwards and my head landed within six inches of a log on the ground. Uh, so now I, you know, know your limits with this guy, use it, use it the way it's meant to be used, but, but know your limits so you don't, you don't injure yourself because it's no fun when you do that. Just keep that saw sharp, guys. I just can't tell you how nice it is to go out with a, with a saw that's, that's sharper than new and you're just zipping through the stuff you know, like nobody's business. And, and no matter where you are 
I learned a hand file, you're only gonna get better. So just keep practicing. So there's the first pile of wood from today and all this beach, it's a little bit wet, but once I split it and stack it for a while, it's gonna dry out real fast. And all these logs here are just the perfect size where they're easy enough to hand split. You just cut them into four pieces, no big deal, and throw them on the pile. They're not super heavy. They're not, you know, struggle to, to split. So uh, this is like the golden zone for firewood right here. And then I put the majority of the other wood, all the heavy stuff I didn't want to have to pick up again, I put them on these two saw horses here. I got these at Lowe's and uh, it says they're rated for a thousand pounds uh, with two of them. So I, I tried not to push it. So a lot of the stuff I, the smaller stuff I put on the pile, but the stuff I didn't want to have to lift up high, uh, I put on the saw horse. But again, just notice how these logs are really the, the size that's easy to move around, easy to cut, uh, and easy to split if there's no knots. So it is that golden zone. And uh, these sawhorses, you know, I got these at Lowe's, and I got some a few years ago, and I was there a couple weeks ago, and they're on sale, so they're under 20 bucks each. And they're not super heavy duty sawhorses, but if you take a look, there's just like a little a little ball here you push in to fold them up. And I would say they probably weigh five to six pounds each. So if you want a lightweight sawhorse, it's just handy to put a piece of, piece of plywood on, make a table, paint a door, uh, stack a little bit of firewood on, not too much. Uh, really handy. So if you go to Lowe's, uh, and this was in the tool corral in Lowe's, and it's made by craftsmen. So, um, again, it's not like a super heavy duty sawhorse, but just really lightweight. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. And um, I just had one final thought was, you know, where I got the sawhorses, the one on the sawhorses, I think in a perfect world, I would just take some larger logs, put some boards or, or just saw some smaller logs to put on top of the larger logs, just to lift that wood up off the ground a bit and uh, and save me some bending. And then the final thought after the final thought was, you know, with, with sharpening the chainsaws by hand, um, I can do it in the field, but I'm not nearly as efficient at it as when I'm doing it in the vise uh, back in the shop. So the, the closer you can get that saw to being like locked in firmly and pretty much like between your belly button and um, the top of your chest there, that's really where you want it. So the, the closer you can come to that, whether it's in the field or for me, it's, it's at the vice in the shop, you're gonna do way better uh, in a fixed position with good lighting sharpening it. So don't think if you can't sharpen it in the field because the thing's, you know, rocking around all over. Um, you know, there are stump vices. There's ways of taking a stump and making a vice. Uh, you can bring a vise in the woods, you know, with all these um, cordless drills now, you could bring a vise in the woods and just screw a vise into a stump in a matter of like a minute or two and use that to sharpen. So uh, just just ideas to think about, but just uh, just keep the saw sharp, guys. That's the most important part. All right, have a good one, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.